us and this is where I, oh just letting you know this is going to be recorded so i've got it i guess that's a good idea let's record it okay so um and this is a place i work the uci center for statistical consulting and that's our web address let's go to our second slide and i can talk about what's going to happen in this little talk. So first we're going to do some introductions. Um, then I want to kind of just show you a brief introduction to how the software works, what the software interface looks like. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work through kind of an example of uh, like a data ma management task that may come across your desk at some point. Um, and we're going to use what's called the world indicators data set. And this data set actually ships with Tableau Prep Builder. And in fact, the Tableau flow file that we'll be building is something that also, a version of it comes with Tableau Prep Builder as well. So if you were to watch this talk and you like what you see, you'll actually have um, the finished product in your hands once you download, a, say a demo of the, of the software or you like it so much, you end up buying it. So, um, so I'm going to introduce the data set, talk about uh, what task we're going to be doing, and then I'll just run right through the demo, which is just, you know, running through this task, creating what's called a flow file. So, and then hopefully we'll have some time for questions at the end. Okay. So first of all, talk about myself. I'm a data analyst here with uh, UCI CSC, and my role here is to provide to form data preparation for research projects. So um, I help assist our staff of statisticians in like cleaning, preparing, merging things like um, doing sort of data management tests, getting the data ready for like research data mostly for um, statistical analysis. So we'll move on to the next thing and about the center about what we do. We're in the Donald Brin School and we support the UCI community, uh, students, staff, and faculty, as well as um, uh, investigators from uh, private business. And we also work with uh, other universities as well. And um, we do assist with all stages of your project. If you are in the market for our services, um, we can help you in all phases of a research project. Uh, here's some information about our website. And we'll be putting these uh, in the chat as well. And also, if you do have questions, obviously, we'd like to have you put those in the chat too. Okay, great. Um, and we do have a form, uh, an official form. So if you were indeed in the market for our services, you can make a request here and fill out a form for us. And, you know, after this talk at any time, if you have any questions about what we do here at the center, um, please uh, feel free to contact Margaret Arrow. And here's her contact information. She's the business, business manager here at the center. Okay. And this is some information uh, taken from our, our webpage. And it just goes, it kind of runs down a list of things that we do, we can do for you. And, a lot of things, uh, you know, pre-study, post-study, you know, study design. Uh, we do power and sample side calculation for you. Pretty much every, everything you need under the sun for your research projects, for a statistical, to statistical analysis, we can do for you. Um, you know, response reviewers, uh, review and preparation of your manuscripts and posters and abstracts. Uh, we do it all and um, we're here for you uh, just contact us on the web or fill out a form or just give us a call. So, okay, let's move on to um, something I thought about when I started to do this talk is that um, I know Tableau has been sort of popular and in, in the news, people know the name, um, but there is a distinction between what we're talking about today, which is Tableau Prep Builder and, the tablo and Tableau itself. Tableau is what you can use to create visualizations, dashboards, um, reports. And um, this is a adjunct tool that comes with a Tableau license. And this is the data management side. Um, 
one of the great things about Tableau is the visual interface. It's kind of a drag and drop uh, uh, interface that you can use to you know, bring data in and then create presentations. And that also extends to Tableau Prep Builder as well. It's, it's a very visual experience, as you'll see. Um, and I think that really aids in its ease of use. You don't have to write lines of code. Um, here at the center, we use things like R and Python, uh, Stata, tools like that where you're writing a lot of code. Um, this will allow people, even non-technical people who don't want to write any code at all, to be able to pull in data and to do a lot of things with that, that you know, would normally take a lot of code, but in this case, save you a lot of trouble of like cutting and pasting and kind of the things you do in Excel. Um, we don't have to do because we're using Tableau Code Builder. So let's, this is a quick snapshot of the user interface. We'll get into the real software as well, but um, like on the left of the screen is where you connect the data. The little, the little diagram that looks like a flow chart, that's actually the flow file. That, that, that's the flow of the data <laughs> as it, as you, um, that's sort of the paradigm to use as kind of a flow chart. So this is a flow file. So each of these icons on the far left in the, each of the rows that represents a, like a data file or a data source. And then each one of the steps that you do to clean your data comes out to be, is one of these icons. So uh, the nice thing about that is you can label all these, make them meaningful. Like um, one of them says indicators to indices or um, clean the countries up, uh, months to years, those kinds of things. So you, it sort of documents itself in a way where you can actually see um, visually what it's doing at a glance rather than having to comment on a lot of code. And sometimes, you know, anybody who writes code knows that a month after you write it, you may not know what's going on. Um, it's very small. Oh, the screen share. Because you're a presenter. Ah, okay. I've been told that my screen is not sharing very well. Um, Margaret, what does it look like? What What does it look like? How would I How would I fix that? Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. It's my. It's my. Yeah. Sorry. I'd hit that button. How's that better? Yes. Sorry about that. I, I did this. I wrote a note to myself to hit the use the slideshow button and I just didn't listen to myself. Okay, here we go. So sorry about that. Um, so maybe you can see this a little better, uh, the different parts of the screen. And thank you, Margaret, for helping me out. Uh, okay. So Anyway, what we have here is the flow. This is, these are the steps that are used to, you know, bring your file in, write your file out. And on each of the steps, if you click on them, it shows information about your data or, or what's going on with your data at the time or that particular step. So in this case, it's a clean step. So we're seeing information about each of the columns in our, in our data set. And the nice thing about it is sometimes um, you'll see samples of what the, what is actually in there. So for countries, we see a list of countries. Um, for years, we get a histogram that shows, you know, um, what are the data, what, what are the, what are in those columns? And then at the bottom, if my screen was bigger, you'd probably see uh, the data itself in sort of a spreadsheet format. So, okay. Let's see right here. Okay, so let's go, oops, no, that not there. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. So let's talk about this global world indicators file, files and the, and the consumer price data set file that we're gonna be working with. Um, our task will be to combine these files together. Uh, let's actually let's take a look at the file themselves. Let's open up Excel. Now this here is the got these exploiting windows all over the place. There's some this is something called the consumer price index file that we get with Tableau. And it's a it's a, it's a file. Let me get to the top. And it has information for uh, countries um, for each month. And you see across the top is the different years where this value is stored. 
So for the year 2004, Afghanistan, this is the number that's stored for a uh, consumer price index. Now, if we go to the other file, we're gonna join it to, this is the global world indicators file. And um, this file has uh, all kinds of different metrics for a country for a particular year. Um, let's see. So we have the year right here. We have our countries. And then we have all these different uh, energy uses, GDP, you know, ex life expectancies and from mortality rates, et cetera. So we're gonna go back to, let me go back to PowerPoint. So we're gonna have this, our task is gonna be to combine these data together. So say uh, our task would, uh, somebody wants you to take uh, this consumer price uh, information and add it to this global world indicator data. So now you, now you have one more data point for this file. So that's basically our task of what we're gonna do. So we're gonna join this data together and we're gonna join it based on year and country. So um, as you probably saw, there's, some num there's a number of issues that we have to get, over, to get through. One is that um, for consumer price data, it's also stored in months, individually by months. And we want a year total. And the, the other thing is that the years are, oops, sorry about that. The years are going across as columns, not as um, formatted in the other file, which is uh, one, one, one row per year. So those are the, the challenges that we have with this data. And now I'm gonna show you next how Tableau Prep will help us get through those. It is, is everybody sort of understand the task that at hand that we're just joining these data together? I don't want to lose anybody. Um, make sure you all understand what we're doing. Um, okay. Okay. Sorry, I missed some of that stuff in the chat before. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up Tableau Prep. So let's let's go to a brand new file. Okay. So here's what here's what you see when you open up Tableau Prep. Um, you see any recent flows you've done, some sample flows. What we want to do is connect to our data files, which are. Let me go here in this directory. So we have this consumer price uh, CSV file and a directory full of all these different files. It's actually one file per year. That's another one of our challenges that we want to merge all these together. So let's get to that. So here, and for example, you can see all the different kinds of data that uh, data formats that Tableau Prep will connect to. It's pretty comprehensive, lots of stuff. Um, well, we're just going to do a simple text file. Let's open up our consumer price file. Okay. And here we have it. So now it's in Tableau Prep. And we can see our list of fields. Um, and if we add a clean step, this is what we saw before, where we can actually see what's in, what's, what's in here. So now um, our other task, the next task is gonna be to bring in the global indicators files, which are housed in that particular directory. So let's add another connection or another text file. In this case, we're gonna open one of these files in the directory. And what we can do is this, we can actually we can actually tell that we want a union multiple table. So Tableau Prep Builder will actually go into this directory, take a look and see what's there. And we can just tell it, hey, we all we want all of these um, all of these CSV files to be appended together. And indeed that's what we just accomplished. So now we have both of our 
both of our data files in Tableau Prep Builder. So, okay. so next what we're going to do is one of our tasks is to join based on year, correct? So if we look at, well, for, the, for this file, year is actually a, a column. So, and in this global world indicators file, it's year is actually stored as, I got so many things on my screen, it's hard to see. Sorry, I'm just doing some cleaner up here. Uh, year is actually stored as a date. So what we would actually like is just a string con containing the year. That would That's what we're gonna do to join. So what we can do is we can convert that to a string and what we can do is we can create we can create new fields based on the contents of fields that exist. So we're going to create a calculated field. We're going to take just the left four characters of that year string that we just created or converted, say four. Oops. And there we have it, we have our year as a string. So we can actually get rid of this one. We're gonna remove this column. And this one, will, this is our new year. Okay. Um, and next, what we're going to do is we're going to, we know that we want to join based on year and country. So if we take a look at country, and this is something I know from working with this file before, and it's also mentioned, you know, it's part of the flow that ships with Pebble Prep is that not all the country names are standard. So if we were to look at, for example, Egypt, it's stored as Egypt, comma, Arab, Rep, here in the global world indicators. But in this column, which houses the country, it's actually stored simply as Egypt. So if we were to try to join, those wouldn't match because, well, the other one has the extra character there. So what we can do if, to correct that is we can go in here, country. Let's look for Egypt again. And we can basically do a global search and replace for anything, any of these records by just saying edit value here. That will change all of them. Oops, I think I'll let the comma in there. There we go. Now we know that they match. And in fact, there's actually a bunch of countries that are um, named slightly differently between the two files. So rather than um, spending a lot of time fixing all of those, I have uh, prepared a file that actually has all that done. So let's go to that one. So this one has all of those countries cleaned. If you look um, here, let's see one second. Okay. Um, so it's known as grouping, I guess, in in um, in uh, Tableau. So we, here, here, all those countries have been actually fixed. But actually, here's a nice, another nice feature of Tableau Prep. For this clean step, um, there are a bunch of different things done. Uh, we, you know, we we change the type of the year to a string. We created a calculated field. We removed the old field. Um, actually, there's a couple other things that were done. But it, it, if you notice, each of these steps is kept as sort of a record of what you've done. 
So the nice thing about this is, you know, just by clicking on this and looking at your changes, you can see a visual list of your changes. And also, if you were to click on this particular change right here, you'll be looking at your data set as it existed when this change was put in. It ignores all the rest of these changes. So um, it's sort of a visual record and kind of a timeline of what, what your um, data looks like. So it's good for debugging. Like if, if issues come up, uh, you can actually go to, well, before I did this change, everything was fine. And now I did this change, something's wrong. So you can go back to that change and, and you can see exactly what your, what the state of your data was before, you know, it, it, each step along the way, which is kind of nice. So, okay, so now that we have our, our um, country standardized, um, we're also going to have to deal with this issue of the years and months. So what, what we need to do is actually pivot these um, year columns and make rows out of them as it is in the other, the global word indicator as well. So for this uh, task, we add what's called a pivot And let's see. Bring that up a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to change all of these into um, column um, row values rather than having them being columns. So we're going to select all of these. And these are the columns that we want to pivot. So now we have our pivot name. That's actually going to be our new year column. And now the values is actually going to be what um, it's going to be what was in those columns, which is actually our consumer price index. So now we have a consumer price index column, which um, changes year to year rather than an individual, individual column for each year. And we can actually make this name a little nicer. Let's clean it and get rid of the letters. So now we've actually joined, um, we've actually prepared for our join in that we now have a year that's a, a a four character column uh, string. And we also have year over here, which is also a four character string. So now we can we can match those. We fixed our countries. So now we, we have standardized on the country name, so we can do a join. Oh, well, I think one thing one thing we should do, I forgot to do, is let me just look into my notes here. I want to make sure I haven't forgot a step. Oh, I think what we want to do is we want to make sure that for any um, of these pivoted values, we want to make sure that we filter out the nulls because the nulls don't mean anything to us. So um, we're going to filter all the nulls out of the um, out of this table. So we're gonna keep only the non-null values. There we go. Wait a minute. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Problem. Okay, I have to, I did that step at the wrong time. So if we're here, we've removed the letters, got our consumer price index. Let's filter all that. There, okay. We wanna keep only the non all that. Okay, 
that worked. Sorry about that. Um, the problem was I actually filtered the values before the pivot happened, which um, I threw everything off. So, okay. So the net result of this is we have our years cleaned up, we have our countries cleaned up, and now um, we can actually do our join. We can join these files together. So that's easily done. We just take um, this step and we put it on top of the other step and it says join. So what we're, what we're gonna do, the, the default is that it um, it joins, it finds columns that it likes. Um, year to year. Oh, I, here's something I realized I should have cleaned up before is that the result of our pivot is that I forgot to fix this. Um, countries are called areas over here. So let's, let's call them country just to, just to be consistent. So if we go to our join, it automatically picked up that there's a year and a year, so it wants to join based on year. Let's add also to that join the criteria that the country equals the country. Okay. Kurt, this is Joni. Uh, Hi, Joni. There was a, a question in the chat. Um, yes. Someone asked, how did you clean up all the country names? Did you have to manually do it one by one? Uh, yes, I did. And I, I, I gave an example of one, one country being clean. Um, and there were actually, I think in my notes, there were about seven countries that were inconsistently named so that I, the, the, the sort of change that I did for the one country, Egypt, I had to do that for the other countries as well. So yes, I did that. I guess you can call it manually, but it's 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 more like a global search and replace because you you're you're not just clicking on one record; you're clicking on the entire data set, saying what what is this country referred to as, and what is it referred to in the other. So, the short answer is yes, manually one by one, but not one record by record; it's just one value by value. So, is that helpful? Okay, all right. Great. Um, okay, so now we've we've done our join, and this uh, the default join that comes up is an inner join. So what happens is for the for an inner join, if we if you understand sort of the SQL syntax, is that only records that match, you know, only only uh, if there's a consumer price record in here, and there's also a global world indicator year and country, then we'll get all those records put together. We, we, that's not exactly what we want. We want to we want to basically keep everything we have in the global indicators and to add consumer price information if it exists in this file. So we're going to do we can actually modify the join by doing this, which says keep everything in here and and add anything that might be found in this file. So um, that's called a I guess we'll call it a write outer join I believe. So. I'm wondering why it's not showing me some data down here. The results. I'm waiting for the join results to come back out and it looks like it's working and I'm not sure why it's taking so long. Oh, okay. Well, it says retrieving data. I'm watching this up here. And I'm wondering why it's not done yet. <laughs> Sorry about this, everyone. I'm joining on year, I'm joining on country. Uh, Kurt, while we're waiting, yes. um, there mm -hmm. was another question. Um, sure. Uh, someone asked, is Tableau Builder easier to combine data in different source, it says in different source data? So I'm assuming they mean maybe like external sources of data that you might want to bring into sure. Tableau. Oh, um, well, I believe once you bring it into Tableau, uh, Tableau sort of sees 
the data is the same. So I mean, like like I I showed, you know, you you get, I I've had I've had um, projects where I combine a couple different kinds, like a like say an Excel file with some data from a MySQL database. Once it comes into Tableau, it's sort of treated the same. Um, does that help? Uh, you can do all these same as long as as long as the, the data comes into the, as, as this tabular form. Um, you can um, you can work with it, uh, and every operation kind of works the same. Okay, so does that help? Is that help? I think that, that I, help? I the person can can speak up if they have questions, but I think it sounds like from you is that you bring in data from a variety of different sources that Tableau can read mm -hmm. as long as it's tabular format you do the data management that you need to do and then that allows you then to do merges like you're doing right now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. exactly and i'm not sure why this showing is just going and going and going This did not happen every time I was trying to do this. Let me remove this joint. It's just add it again and see if I can get it to work. Oh, really odd. So in this case, we have, huh. Yep. Oh, huh. it's very odd. Now it feels like every file. Huh. So we're in some kind of weird state here. Well. Uh, Kurt, do you have an image of what the data should look like I, while let, you're waiting? Let me, let me try to uh, get go to a like I I had do I had done like a run through of this before, and maybe it'll I can back I can back up through that run through and get to where we were and then do the join there. Interesting. Hmm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> This didn't happen. I'm going to quit Tableau and start all over, start uh, Tableau up again. Okay. Okay. Good old force quit on a Mac. So I'm just apologize everyone. I'm just waiting for a tab of prep builder to start up again. Okay. I'm not exactly sure why this is happening. 
Oh, okay. Let's open up this one. Oops, oops. Hey, Kurt, while yeah. we're waiting, we have a yes. question in the chat. Is there a sure. free version of Tableau Prep? Um, there is no free version, actually. Um, it's part of, Tableau Prep Builder comes as part of a license um, uh, for, for Tableau itself. So that's that's the way I started using it as I got um, started working with Tableau and then Tableau Prep Builder was included as part of the subscription. Okay, well, let's see if we can start from this point and then um, say do our join like as we did before. We're gonna add, okay. Looks like it's working better now. We're at, we'll add um, country and country. Ah, see. And then uh, we're gonna do what we our our, our right outer join to include all the all the global data in there. And then. Uh, Add a clean step here so we can actually just see what see. Uh, uh. Now we have all of our information in here, including consumer price index, where we where we have it, added to the rest of our metrics, our country metrics. Now Kurt, what we can do, yes. We have another question in the chat. Uh, okay. Someone here has Tableau desktop installed. They have the license. Mm -hmm. Does it automatically come with prep builder? Uh, I believe it does. You should have a license for Prep Builder. Um, it was that was a, that was part of my. I had the Tableau desktop subscription. I think it was called, and it included that tool as well. So okay, um, back to here. Um, there's a couple of uh, columns you might want to remove, like the, say this one that called file paths, we'll remove that one. And when every time you do a join, you end up with multiple uh, multiple of these, like you have two years and two countries. So this one is an extraneous one, remove that one, and this one as well. Uh, this is the country from the consumer price file because we can see that it includes no. So that's not the one we want. We remove that one. We can actually get rid of the little dash ones here. And the one here. And basically our data is in the state that we would like it to be. We've completed our task. We've joined consumer price index information to the global world indicators. Um, one a slight point I wanted to point out is that um, adding consumer price index information, like I said, it, is, is, it doesn't really give you a meaningful uh, a metric for anything actually, but it is how, it, think, think of us using that number as a way of demonstrating aggregation in Tableau Prep Builder. Um, I know I don't want to be putting out incorrect information by saying adding up all these consumer price monthly numbers, which are percentages actually, into a, a single number and adding it to this global indicator makes it gives, gives some sort of meaningful number. I just want to make sure that this is only for the purposes of the exercise. So um, okay, now with that we've we've cleaned up our our, our data. Now it's time to, to save it somewhere. And that's done with an output step. So let's, let's say we want to save it as a, let's save it as a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. Um, we'll put it out. We'll browse for location. 
click here. Call it output. And we're going to, they always want you to have a worksheet. So we'll just create a new worksheet called sheet one. And then when we run our flow, it'll perform all of these steps and uh, create our file. Okay. So if we go to Excel, we can open in the right three. Our new file we just created. And let's see what we got. Ta-da, there we are. Your country, our new CPI added to the list of other indicators. So that, uh, that concludes our demo. Um, I see we have some items in the chat here. Are there any more? Wait, I might as well go back to my PowerPoint. And work any questions. And please make a note of our, uh, our website and uh, the information about how to make a request. And again, um, our business manager's contact information. Hey, Kurt, okay. we have some questions in the chat. Yeah, I, I noticed. Uh, can I reuse data prep steps? I believe there's ways to cut and paste them from one flow file to another. Um, yes, you can. I believe you can. Um, and uh, Max has a question. The exported data set is huge, too large to in Excel. What's your advice? Um, there are other ways. Oh, too large to open in Excel. Hmm. I haven't had any experience using typo prep with a, a file of this size. I have used um I've had I have used it to connect to like a MySQL database, which uh contain a, a, a lot of information. Um but I don't know that of course that that entails uh getting your data into a SQL server. Um the exported data set is huge. Um I well it's as far as exactly. dealing with big it files. It is not oh I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Max, did you have a comment about your question? Oh, I, we, we have a, a question from Davis. It says, can you export data into an interactive dashboard or would that be within Tableau and not Tableau Prep? Yeah, you, the, 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 it's Tableau Prep takes data in and puts data out, basically. Um, it, uh, it doesn't, it can create a data that's a source for a, a, a dashboard, uh, an interactive dashboard, but um, it can't really create the dashboard itself. Um, as far as the large data set issue, uh, we've been dealing with some large data sets, uh, but we've been working with them in R, so and not using table prep for them. I, I'm not sure what the data, what, what, what sort of, what the limits are for data uh, table prep. That might be something I could I could uh, research and maybe get back to you on. How about that? Oh, okay. Thanks, Max. I will too. Uh, if I find out anything, I'll let you know. Just uh, maybe leave me your contact information in the chat, like a personal chat. Uh, any more questions? Anything else? Um, yeah, well, just to sum up, um, I just want to say that uh, the advantages of working with Tableau Prep Builder is not having to write many lines of code. 
uh, doing everything visually. The visual paradigm is really nice to work with, work within, um, and debug. It's great for debugging because you can just see what your where your steps are. You can look at the state of your data each step along the way, which is great. And it's not not always easy to do with code, um, setting breakpoints and things. Um, uh, it also can take data from myriad of sources, as you, as you said. Um, oh, we have a question. How can we get a recording of this webinar? Um, I guess, Margaret, are we going to put it up on our site? Yes, that's correct. We will be putting it up on our website as soon as we can. Okay. Um, are there any more questions? If not, um, I just want to say thank you for everybody for, for coming out and to definitely check out uh, the CSC and hopefully we can help you guys out if you have any uh, statistical needs. <laughs> well, thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. All right. You guys all have a good day. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Please remember to yeah. fill out the survey. Oh, for learning Tableau prep, I have a, I have a question. Um, actually, Tableau has a lot of little, uh, a lot of uh, videos online. Um, they do a lot with um, a lot of sort of like helpful videos. They even have a, a certification programs and um, educational programs like little courses and things too. So to check those out on their site. Also, let's, you know, just Google, Google um, Tableau Prep Builder on YouTube. There's a lot of helpful videos that I use to kind of just get me up to speed. So um, a lot of resources, resources out there. So. You're welcome, Peyton. Thanks for coming. Thank you all for coming today. If there are no other questions, we'll conclude our meeting. Okay, thank you, Margaret. Okay, have a great day, everyone.